Let's unveil the hidden benefits of fish farming in Africa. At the end of this video, whenever you see fish in the market, this is what you're going to see. Gold. I bought this for myself after harvesting fish from my first fish farm in order to immortalize my success in fish farming. Apart from being a business coach, I am a certified veterinarian and I've had more than 15 years of experience as a professional and I've been working with farmers of all caliber. My name is Asongwe Luis and you're watching Africa Today and we are starting right now. There are several reasons why you should start fish farming. And I think that one of the best reasons why you should start fish farming is that we are actually running out of stock of fish. Now, 70% of all the fish that is found in our oceans have already been exploited. Now, where else are we going to have fish if we don't farm fish? If we don't farm fish, we are going to go out of fish. And we know we don't just replace fish with other stock. We can replace fish with chicken. Yeah, it's true. But we cannot say that we can easily replace fish with red meat. We know what red meat is. Red meat poses a lot of threat to our health. And so why should you take that kind of risk where you have a very nice and delicious alternative like fish? As a business coach, before thinking about money, I always tell most of my clients that if you want to start up a business, always put your clients, always put your customers at the center of that business. When your customers are at the center of the business, you are naturally going to have a selling point. You are naturally going to stand out in that business. Now, if you put the health of your customers in front, you know that you are doing fish, not just to have money, but to increase or to improve the health status of your customers. You are going to have a natural selling point of your product. White meat is better, far more better than red meat. We know that red meat has a lot of cholesterol and it also has saturated fats. These saturated fats are capable of affecting your blood circulatory system and giving you problems like high blood and all that. We all know that these are chronic problems that have no cure. So the first thing you want to do is to locate your fish farm. The location of the fish farm is very important. It's actually what makes many fish farms to fail. And that's why I said unveiling the potential of fish farming. Because if you locate your fish farm very well, you are going to make a lot of money. You are going to succeed. There's a very high chance that you're going to succeed because the main problems of fish farming is water. If you have good quality of water and you are having a very good site, why are you not going to succeed? These fishes want to swim in water. They're talking about water that is not polluted. You should not go and locate your fish farm in an area where there are lots of industries that are pouring waste into rivers and all that. Talking about rivers, it is preferable to locate your fish farm around a river. You need to locate around the river so that you, it will guarantee you that you're going to have water all year round. Now, if you're having water all year round, there is another risk that is involved. You need to verify if you are buying this land, for example, if you bought, if you just bought this land or if you want to buy a land to start fish farming. Now, you have to be very intentional anyway. Let me come in a little bit. You have to be very intentional about everything you do when you are doing fish farming. In fact, in business, I always tell my clients, in business, if you want to start up any business, you should have to be very intentional in what you are doing. Every move should be intentional. In fish farming, if you want to buy a land to start up a fish pond, you need to first of all verify the water source in that area. Is it going to last all year round? That's very important. Now, if it's the source of water is lasting all year round, around, that's very important and that's very nice. It's a good thing. But there's one risk still involved. In the rainy season, is it flooding? Is that river flooding in the rainy season? Just the fact that just the fact that there is a stream, it poses another risk. It's very important. This is a very important point. Many people have lost all their stock because of this. That is, you take your time, you, you stock your fish pond with fish, you growing them up to a particular level, and one day when there is so much flood, the flood just carries it away. So you need to verify, you need to carry out research. Ask the neighbors that are staying around that area what is the situation in the rainy season? Does the river get dry during the dry season? Does it overflow during the rainy season? Those are important questions to ask before you locate your fish farm. Now, I also advise you to locate your fish farm on a slope. Now, it has two main advantages. It's not going to make you to dig so much. The second advantage is that water is going to naturally flow into your fish farm without you needing a pump. So you're not going to jump into problems like, hey, there's no electricity, I need to pump water into my fish pond. Oh, no, everything's going to flow with gravity. So the same way that our water gets into the farm is the same way that our water can also get out of the farm with an outlet. So when locating your fish farm, take note, locate it on the little, on the gentle slope. Don't put it on a steep area. When you put it on a steep area, you can easily have a flood. 
That's it for the location. This is something that people always neglect and that's why they always find problems in fish farming. I remember I told people that we are unveiling the hidden potential. We are unveiling the benefits of fish farming. So if you do this thing the right way, you are going to make a lot of money. You are going to make a lot of money and it's going to be satisfying. You need to know the character of the soil. So when you get to the side, what you need to do is you grab a bit of soil on your hands, you squeeze it, then you throw it on the ground. Now, if that soil scatters, you know that that soil cannot hold water. If the soil doesn't scatter on the ground, you know that that soil can hold some amount of water. That's the first test. After passing this first test, you can go now to the second test. Now, the second test to test if the area is suitable for fish farming is a test where you get to the side, you dig a hole as deep as your waist, then you fill it up. That should be done in the morning. You fill it up with water. When you fill it up with water, you, you leave the area, you come back in the evening, and uh, you verify if there is still water inside that hole. Normally, the water would have dropped. Of course, you are not dropping water inside the sea, so you, it's not going to remain the same. So what you do is you, you fill the water again. You add some water into that pit again. It's going to go up to a particular level. Then you cover it. You cover that water with maybe cardboard paper or some leaves and all that. You allow it there, you go, and then you come back the next morning to check. Now, in the next morning, if you check that water and most of the water is still inside that pit, it means that that site is good for fish farming. Congratulations, you've just had your first site. So, the soil should not be that kind of porous soil. It should be soil that has a little bit of clay properties in it that can hold some amount of water. So now that we've seen how to locate our fish farm, it's time for us to start our fish pond. How are we going to do this? With $1,000 in Africa, you can set up a fish pond of 20 by 20, that is 20 meters by 20 meters. Now this capacity can take 8,000 fingerlings. Now fingerlings are the baby fish and you can buy them at 40 cents each. Now 8,000 multiplied by 40 cents, you are going to have about $3,360. So you need $3,360 to start up a fish farm of 8,000 fingerlings. I'm sorry, let us stop here. There are many things that are coming into my mind at the same time, but I'll try to give you those that are very, very important. Now, there's one question that people always ask about fish. Now, they are going to grow for five months. And during this period, they're going to consume 71 cents each worth of feed, making a total of $5,654. So considering that you multiply 71 cents by 8,000 fingerlings. Now, this is within the period of five months. At the end of production, we will consider that we are going to have 7,500 fish. That is already big fish. Keeping it for five months, feeding it the right way, we are going to have big, wholesome fish. That is about 7,500. We will consider that we have lost 500 to mortality due to maybe natural causes and all that. So if we consider that we sell each fish at $2.05, we are going to have $18,750 at the end of production. So if we have to remove all our expenditure, we are going to have $8,736. Now $8,776 is just one pound. Now, I've hardly seen fish farmers having one pound. They always have two, three, four, five pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds. Now imagine you have just 10 pounds. You multiply 10 by $8,736. You're going to have $87,360. And this is just for five months. You multiply that by two, you know what you get. You're going to have $174,720 a year. That's the amount of money you can make from fish farming a year in Africa. I'm not talking about making this money elsewhere. You're making this money in Africa. And you can make far more than this. This is just the beginning. We're talking about making this money in an area where there is a ready market. You have taken the fish that is consumed in this area. This is tilapia fish. When you keep tilapia fish, this is the amount of money that you are going to soak from the market. This is the amount of money you are going to make. That's why I bought myself this golden fish. Because I know what fish can do. We're talking about the ready market. And many countries are moving ahead to stop importation of any kind of fish from the sea. Many countries are already making that move. They are only afraid that the local production is never going to meet up because currently the local production is not meeting up in any country. In any country from north to south, from south to east, local production of fish 
has not met up in any country. There is a lot of money in animal production. This is a market that is guaranteed to grow. As I told you, the oceans, 70% of the ocean have already been exploited. Many people don't know this data and we're just living in darkness. We don't know there is a problem. African governments need to sensitize people in Africa and let them understand the need of starting fish farming. Now imagine, look at the portion of China, look at the portion of India, the portion of the US is growing. Everywhere around the world, there is growing population, except in Japan that the population is declining. But nearly every other country's population is growing and Africa is the worst. The main problem you are going to have in fish farming is demand. You're not going to meet up with demand. So if you carry out fish farming well, I promise you, you are going to be a millionaire in no time. That is all for this edition of today. I wish to meet you in my next video. If you have not subscribed, I don't know what you are waiting for. As usual, press the like button, subscribe to the channel. Share this video with your loved ones. This video can be a very good gift for somebody you love and want to succeed in business because livestock and agriculture have the highest success rate in business in Africa. Where it is certain, our population is only increasing. Our test for food is only increasing. Meet you in my next video. Bye-bye.